how our sun formed is still shrouded in mystery. Our sun actually rotates much slower than other comparable stars. The speed of rotation has an effect on how active stars are, so our sun is quite special in rotating slower and allowing the conditions for life to exist for long enough to allow life itself to evolve. How quickly our star rotated when it was younger is therefore a key to understanding this. Now scientists have used samples from the moon to try and determine what the spin rate was when it was only one billion years old. In the mainstream model of star formation, as matter collapses inwards due to gravity, a rotational momentum will be imparted on the object, causing it to start spinning. Over the lifespan of the star, this rotation rate will slow down. So the question is, did our sun spin at the same average rate as the other stars, but just lost more momentum than others, or did it always spin slower compared to other younger stars? A clue to this may be hidden on the surface of the moon. When scientists first analysed the samples returned from Apollo missions, they discovered that although the main chemical elements were very similar to those on Earth, there were two which seemed to be much lower in concentration, sodium and potassium. And they ran simulations to see what effect the solar wind and coronal mass ejections might have on this. They claimed that only the simulation where the sun rotated slowly would allow this amount of sodium and potassium to be ejected by the charged particles. They determined that when our sun was only 1 billion years old, it probably only rotated once every 9 to 10 days, which is slower than about 50% of other comparable stars. So let's break this finding down into more detail, as there are some very interesting spin-offs which we need to look at. Firstly, it must be realised that the samples we have from the moon are from a very limited number of locations. We also have no comparison with a rock below the surface. So, if this theory is correct, we should find rocks below the surface which do contain higher levels of potassium and sodium. And at this point, we have nothing other than surface material. Which begs an interesting question. We sent a probe onto the surface of Mars to drill a core sample, but we never performed this on the Moon? Their assumption is also based on the notion that the Moon formed through a rather farcical process of two impactors into the Earth which were about the same size as Mars. Therefore, the composition of the Moon should be identical to the crust of the Earth. Now, Having examined Alvin's work, it is an interesting point to note that the density of the Moon matches no other planet in the solar system bar one, and that is Mars. Is it not therefore more likely that the Moon formed separately and therefore would have a composition which is indeed different to Earth's? Now moving on to the Sun, I do find it an interesting observation about our Sun. Currently our Sun rotates at a rate of about 27 days. And remember this is different depending on the latitude. Slow in the poles and faster at the equator. And by the way, just an interesting side note, the Moon orbits around the Earth also in 27 days. But I, I digress. Now we have quite a lot of evidence of the rotation rate of stars. Now I won't go into the detail of how they measure this rotation rate, but um, more details can be found in the papers that I will link below. So how does our star compare to other stars? When we compare to other stars of similar age and similar size, we find that the Sun is quite an outlier and has on average a rotation rate which seems to be 25% slower than the others. And if we look at younger stars, we also see that their rotation rates vary considerably, and indeed most have faster rotation rates than the 9 to 10 days. If we look at younger stars, we also see that their rotation rates vary considerably, and indeed most have a faster rotation rate than the 9 to 10 days they estimate for our young Sun. Understanding why some stars start with a slower rotation rate compared to others is still a mystery, but it is important that we recognise that there is a very clear pattern across all the stars. As they age, their rotation rate slows down, 
Hannes Alvin's model of the formation of stars and the stellar circuit took this into account. In his model, the final part of the process of stellar formation was that of gravitational collapse, and this imparts the required momentum to start the star spinning. And in his model, it was the rotation which caused the formation of the magnetic fields. The rotating magnetic fields produced the stellar circuit that we all talk about. In his model, as the star ages, its kinetic energy of rotation would be converted into magnetic energy, and over time, this would cause the rotation rate to slow down. In these papers, it has also become obvious that determining the age of stars is extremely difficult. Our Sun's age is determined by radioactive dating of various meteor samples. Now this presents two issues. The first is that it does not date the Sun itself. It is quite feasible that the Sun formed without any companions at the start. In both Hannes' model and the more current electric solar formation, these two events are not always connected. The second is the radioactive dating is not a good measure of an object of this extreme age. It is therefore quite possible that our Sun is much, much older and that this age would put the rotation rate back into the normal path. It is equally possible that what we observe as older or younger stars is totally false and in fact that what we are observing is a variation in the input current which would make the stars look older or younger and therefore change its rotation rate. So we are left with two possibilities. Either Hannes Alvin's model is correct and we do in fact see rotation rates slow over time, or stars are driven by incoming Birkeland currents which vary and make it appear that the stars are in different parts of their classical life cycle. And in fact these two ideas are not necessarily mutually exclusive and both may be correct at the same time. And on that note I will leave you to ponder the implications of this. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.